Hello, and welcome to another in the SQL Server 2008 Did You Know series. My name is Aaron Lowe. I'm a Magenic Senior Consultant out of the Chicago office, and today we're going to take a look at SQL Server 2008 Data Collector. This demonstration will be using the February 2008 CTP of SQL Server. So, go into Management Studio. Connect to our instance. You'll notice that SQL Server Agent is running. I've turned it on. And we go down to Management. And under Data Collection, notice we have nothing currently. It's not turned on as the icon shows. Right click and we configure the Management Data Warehouse. This is where we're actually going to store the information that we capture, the data that we capture. So we give it a server name. I'm just going to use my local server. Obviously, the ideal situation would be you'd be using a different server. And I'm not going to use my existing databases. I'm going to create a new one. I'm just going to call it data capture. I'm going to set a cache directory. This is where the data is collected locally before it's uploaded. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the cache directory. This directory was not created by default. I actually created that directory earlier. I'm going to map my built administrators to admin. Again, breaking best practices rule remove the built in administrators if you get the opportunity. And finish. Now it's just going to run through here. It's going to create the database. It's going to install the data capture. And it's going to map the logins and users. And then it's actually going to start the collection sets. Now, by default, it's actually going to have three different collection sets. But what's nice about it is we can also create our own through T-SQL as well as an API interface. All right, everything is successful. Now let's look at what we have. So we have system data collection sets. Again, these are the three that it automatically generates. And all of them are currently turned on. We'll also notice in SQL Server Agent. And the jobs. It's actually created a set of jobs for those. So the collection is going to upload. Let's take a look at the disk usage one. I'm not going to go through and detail all of these, but just to give you an idea. Obviously you can stop, collect and upload now. I've gone into properties here. And there's all different sorts of options here. You can set right non-cached. You know, remember how we had set that cache directory as a schedule. These are the collection items. Where it's actually collecting both information from the data files as well as information from the log files. We'll run as the SQL Server Agents account. Retain data length. So, and as you see, it's just some T-SQL scripts here. Uploads, you'll notice that this is all grayed out because this was already set. And then a description. So, if we want to take a look at it, we can collect and upload now. I'll go ahead and do that with all three. Now, let's look at the report. Obviously, not much has been going on as I've been doing this demo, so we don't expect to see much. But again, just to give you an idea of what the report's going to look like.
I do apologize for the slowness of this. I'm running on a VPC. Obviously, this would be much faster in a real server environment. So I went into disk usage here. Now you can see there's a data capture. We just started that, or we just created that, excuse me. There's a system databases report server. As you can see, these are clickable to go deeper down. Obviously, these are just RDLs that have been created through reporting server. So it's very useful data. And you'll notice, well, actually you won't notice, but if we were to add data here, you would see this line curve upwards or downwards for your trend analysis here, or for the database, or for the log. You can script the data collection, just like everything else. You can analyze the script. Currently, the GUI in the CTP6 or the February CTP does not allow you to create data collections. You have to do that through scripting at this point, either through T-SQL or through the API itself. You can look at the books online for the API or the syntax for T-SQL there. And here's our data capture that we just created. If you actually go into this, as you see, it's created tables and such. Well, that's just a brief overview of the data collection. Again, the I think there's going to be real value in creating our own data collectors for potentially even applications because it does allow just T-SQL scripting as well as performance counters and trace files. Well, I hope you enjoyed this overview of the data collector in SQL Server 2008. And I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this screencast.